What are the lengths you'd go to for love? Would you even love them in death? Do you really mean it? I'm Chandler, and this is the return of terrifying Talon Tales on PHS The Talon. In 1877, Charles Tanzler was born in Dresden, Germany. During his childhood, he would claim to have been visited by a spirit of a deceased relative, who revealed the face of his one true love. Well, he had been determined to find his soulmate. When he reached his 40s and his fantasy woman was nowhere to be found, all hope seemed to be lost. He soon immigrated to Florida, where he worked as a radiology technologist at the Marine Hospital Service in Key West, Florida, where our story begins. April 22nd, 1930. Elena de Hoyas had been brought into Marine Hospital and was soon diagnosed with tuberculosis which was still considered to be a fatal disease in the early 1900s. Tanzler, on his daily rounds, ran into the woman and immediately recognized her as the girl from his childhood vision and was determined to save her. He would administer experimental treatments consisting of specially made tonics, elixirs, and medicines in hopes of curing Elena, while also attempting to woo her with expensive gifts and constantly declaring his love for the dying woman. His efforts were futile, both in love and his treatment. Hoya succumbed to her illness in October 1931. The obsessed caretaker, now overtaken with grief, insisted on paying for the funeral expenses and even purchased a stone mausoleum to house her body. Tanzler would visit the mausoleum every night for nearly two years, pining for the closeness he could not receive behind stone walls and the alleged cries of Elena's spirit drove him to do the unthinkable. In April of 1933, he removed Elena's body from its tomb, using a toy wagon to bring it home, now two years deceased. Carl Tanzler was left with the task of maintaining Hoyas's corpse. In a Frankenstein-esque fashion, he used wire to keep her skeleton intact, replaced her eyes with glass orbs, filling her body with rags and replacing her decaying skin with plaster and fabric. He even went so far to create a wig from her own hair and mask the smell with perfume. There, she laid in his home for seven years. Reports from neighbors and passerbys talked about how they often saw Tansler dancing with what they said to be a giant doll. However, what raised suspicion was how this reclusive man had been seen buying women's clothing frequently, causing the Hoyas' family to investigate. In 1940, Elena's sister Florinda showed up at Tanzler's home where she found what she believed to be a life-size effigy of her departed sister and soon contacted authorities who determined that the doll was in fact Elena. Tanzler was swiftly arrested for graveside desecration, but when he stood trial for his crimes while admitting to everything and more, He was acquitted due to the statute of limitations being expired. Elena finally got to rest peacefully in an unmarked grave, but not before she sat on display at a local funeral home, where many paid to look at Tansler's work. For Tansler, he lived out the rest of his days alone, only accompanied by a life-size doll created in Elena's image. 